that I'll begin, well, I have begun. I am now a pastor in the South Atlantic Conference. I'll be a full-time pastor again. I'll be introduced and installed in my new churches on the 6th of April, two Sabbaths from now. Our platform here will continue. Our Sunday morning will continue. There is no change. There's no reason to stop something that says if it's not broken, don't fix it. And so this evening, God's ideal man. That's our theme this evening, God's ideal man. I invite you, if you have your Bibles, uh, to turn to the first division of the psalm, psalm number one, as you follow through, as we will unpack this psalm in our Vespers homily this evening. The psalmist says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law that he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that <clears throat> bring it forth is fruit in a season. Is leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. In godly or not so, but I like the shaft which the wind drive it away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Holy Spirit, speak to these feeble lips of clay this evening. Bring the words of hope and inspiration for this Vespers hour as we begin on sacred time once more to honor and to extend our acclamation of your goodness and your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's ideal man. Now, Psalm 1 probably provides the, the scriptural basis for Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Both Psalm 1 and the Sermon on the Mount describe the attitude and actions of God's ideal person. Both set forth the ideal person's character, their influence, their conduct and their destiny. The Sermon on the Mount closes with a description of the destiny of humans. Those who both hear and heed the word of God, like the blessed man described in Psalm 1, brethren are likened to a wise man who built his house on a rock foundation. His house was stable and secure in the time of testing. And that is critical. Those who hear but refuse to heed the word of God, brethren, like the ungodly man described in Psalm 1, verse 4 through 6, they are likened to a foolish man who built his house on sands in the time of testing they will simply discover that they do not have that which gives them permanence and stability Psalm 1 presents the portraits of two men the blessed man guards his direction the blessed man guards his leisure. 
the best man guards his company. Brethren, the blessed man loves and meditates on the word of God day and night. The ungodly man is just the complete opposite. He walks in the counsel of the ungodly, stands in the way of sinners and sits in the seat of the scornful. Instead of being secure, instead of being fruitful, instead of being happy, he's blown about by the winds of life and is finally destroyed for the lack of a secure relationship with God. In a few well-chosen words, the psalmist brethren sketches two, two sharply contrasting pictures. The first picture is a happy and successful man. The second picture, brethren, is a man whose life ends in dismal failure. Because all of us, because all of us hunger for success and want to avoid failure, let us Take time this evening to focus our attention on the first in order that we might avoid the destiny of the second. And so in our message this evening, we'll cover three basic points and then we'll bring it to a conclusion. And the first point is the pathway of spiritual success. The pathway of spiritual success. Here, the portrait of God's ideal man, brethren, describes him both negatively and positively. There were at least three great refusals in his life. He refused to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. In times of uncertainty, he did not seek the advice of the ungodly. He deliberately rejected the ideas and philosophies of the ungodly. He refused to adopt the principles or follow the practices of those who had eliminated God from their thinking. He refused to stand in the way of sinners seeking no intimacy with them as companions. He refused to associate with rebellious offenders against God. Now, he was quite aware of the destructive effect of continuing contact with evil. So he refused to sit in the seat of the scornful. He did not listen to those who were experts uh, at a screening, brethren, experts at screening and scoffing and joking about sacred things. We have to learn to draw the line. We have to learn to stand. Here I stand as Martin Luther. I can do no other. When I was a boy, my mother used to say, if you lay down with dogs, you'll get up with fleas. We must draw a line. At least two prominent positive qualities affected his life. We find <clears throat> in Psalm 1 and verse 2, his greatest delight was in knowing and doing the will of God. For us in the 21st century today, it should be the same to know and joyfully do the will of God. He rejoiced in the precious promises of God. He responded with gratitude to the purpose of God's grace. That was Behind the law of God. 
O friends, he meditated on the law of the Lord day and night. He never missed a beat. This means, brethren, that he gave the truth of God serious consideration. He gave it serious thought. It was never out of mind and out of sight. He molded over in his mind throughout the day in order that its meaning might saturate his whole being. That's what we must do every single day in order to shut out the devil. In order to shut out the world. We must meditate on the word of God day and night. We must have constant communion with God. And that leads me to my second point, the pathway of spiritual failure. Well, that's natural because before in, in, in the first point is the, the pathway of spiritual success. Now we have the pathway to spiritual failure. So while the psalmist does not describe specifically the pathway to spiritual failure, we are left to infer from the spirit of the psalm that the ungodly man was just the opposite of God's ideal man. Why? Because he rejected the law of God as the guiding principle for his life. He directed his life on the basis of the counsel of the ungodly. He did not hesitate to tarry in the way of sinners. It is possible that in addition to listening to the scorn of the scoffers, that he likewise thought lightly and spoke dismissively of the things of God. Nothing can go right if we do those things. Nothing at all. Another thing my mother used to say, show me your company and I tell you who you are. If you mingle with sinners and obnob with sinners, sooner or later you become one of them. It's just a fact of life. The more time we spend with something or someone, the more closer we begin to align with them. And before you know it, we're down a slippery slope. And that leads us to point number three, our final point. Contrasted destinies. That's important. Contrasted destinies. You see, church, the ungodly man is pictured as an ever the godly man rather is pictured as an evergreen tree planted by the rivers of water. It is a picture of vitality. It's a picture of prosperity. It's a picture of faithfulness. It's a picture of permanency. The ungodly man discovers that uh, instead of standing secure like a tree planted by the rivers of water, he is blown about like the shaft which the storm of life sweep across the plains. He discovers that uh, when the world caves in, instead of being alive, he is dead. Is dry, is wind driven, is insecure, is helpless. Why? Because he has no fruit, he has no vitality, and his life ends in misery and failure. That is the ungodly man. It's a portrait of despair. It's a portrait of gloom. It's a portrait of spiritual poverty. It's a portrait of sadness and eternal condemnation. And so finally, each of us would be wise brethren to compare our choices with the choices 
of the men described in this psalm this evening. We should earnestly, earnestly seek uh, to imitate the example of the blessed man in order that we might escape the destiny of the ungodly man. God desires for us to be saved in his kingdom. Is it in wonder that he gave us this psalm? How beautiful it starts in sound. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. May God help us this evening as we begin this Sabbath worship, as we begin this Sabbath hour, to be like the blessed man, our Father and our God. We desire this evening to learn from your psalm about the blessed man, to let our life be like the blessed man, who will always meditate on your words, who will always maintain an active, vibrant relationship with you, so that in the day of reckoning when you shall come, we will not find ourselves running away, scurrying for the mountains or rocks, but we'll be able to stand like all the saints of old and look up and say, Lo, this is our God whom we have long waited for. And we shall hear the well done thou good and faithful servants. Thou have been faithful over few things. Enter into the joys of thy Lord. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.